All right, everybody. Rondo will be here in two minutes. We sold out tonight 15,525 uh, tickets, a gate of $1.4 million. The bonuses tonight were $50,000 each. <clears throat> Submission of the night, Robertson. KO of the night, Lawler. And fight of the night, Bermudez versus Grice. Congratulations to all of them. They won $50,000 each. Good job. <clears throat> Who's got the first question? Kevin Ioli. Question for Liz. Uh, Liz, when you got Ronda's back there and you were going for the choke and then the neck crank, uh, did you think you were close at any point? And uh, can you talk about uh, what was going through your mind at that point? Uh, yeah, neck cranks are always hard to pull off. I mean, if the person has a lot of heart and they can fight through it, then like she did, she, she was successful. And then uh, I bear it down where I have teeth marks, actually, from getting on her mouth, thinking that maybe I could get her to tap just by knocking some teeth out, but it <laughs> just didn't quite work out. And then uh, when you were on the ground, you were able to defend against uh, the armbar for quite a long time. And, you know, obviously you had practiced that. Can you talk about sort of where she ended up getting you? Did you make a mistake, or was it just a good technique on her part? No, she had a great technique, and she kept uh, alternating how she was trying to pull the armbar, and uh, ultimately she got it. <laughs> And then last question for you, did she surprise you with anything? Was she stronger than you thought, quicker than you thought? Was there anything about her going into the fight that you had a preconceived notion on that you changed from being in the cage with her? No, she came out exactly how I expected. Good. Great fight. Dana, I was just wondering your reaction to the main event. And, uh, you know, when Liz got her back, that was really a dramatic moment. What was going through your mind? It was awesome. I mean, anybody who's ever rolled before knows when somebody gets your back and starts, puts that on your jaw and on your teeth and on your face, that is no fun. Uh, and uh, I don't think Rana's going to be eating a lot of food at her after fight party tonight. <laughs> And then last question, I'll give the mic to someone else. Uh, what was your take on the henderson Machida fight? And, uh, you know, obviously the crowd didn't like it. Uh, you know, what was your take? And will Lyoto get the title shot that you promised? That's one of those fights that, you know, the first round, how you score the first round, tough to score. Lyoto gets the top position and drops a few bombs before the end of the round. Second round was, uh, and the third round, neither one of them did anything the last three and a half minutes. So to... It's anybody's fight. I, I gave it to, to Machida, barely. And does he get the title shot now still? Yeah, he's the, he just beat the number one contender, which would make him the number one contender. John? I guess to follow up on that, I mean, a lot of people are saying that maybe uh, you wouldn't name a title shot right away, depending on maybe how Alexander Gustafson does in April. But you feel confident in saying that even with that performance that – left the crowd booing that yeah. Machida's the Listen, guy. Listen, Dan Henderson's one of the toughest guys in the sport. You know, you, you don't knock Dan Henderson out and when you're in there. Lyoto took some big shots from Dan. Dan took some big shots from Lyoto. You know, it wasn't a barn burner. It wasn't the most exciting fight you've ever seen. You won't be writing stories about this fight till the end of time. But, you know, Lyoto won the fight. He beat the number one contender. He beat Dan Henderson. I guess a fight we may be writing stories about the main event. Uh, all week long, we were trying to figure out what's the best way that this could work out for everybody that's going to help women's MMA. What did you think? I mean, could there have been a better story for you to, to, to write? You know, I, I, you know, there's a lot of things that I'm really naive to. You know, it's 2013, and uh, I, I never expected such goofy backlash from people about two women headlining a main event. What was awesome was... Uh, for once, I can actually praise the media. Uh, the way that the media handled this fight, mainstream was awesome. Uh, you know, the, I think that this fight got the respect it deserved, um, and then some. I mean, it was it was blown. I mean, Sports Center was tweeting all night about the fight tonight on Twitter, um, and and they were the front page of CNN and Sports Illustrated and ESPN.com. And it, it, just the way that the, the media treated this fight was amazing. Uh, I, I really respect the way that this fight was treated. And then those two went in and delivered tonight. You know, so, you know, like I said, at the pre-fight press conference before we even got here and we had a $1.4 million gate, um, the, the, these, these two girls went out tonight and showed everybody what it's all about and what they do and what they have. They both look like professionals. The other thing, the other thing, too, is that Liz Carmouche was a big setup. She was brought in here for Ronda Rousey to smash and all this other stuff. She's seven and two. You know what I mean? Um, if you, Ron, Ronda's got six fights, but if you count her amateur, she's got nine fights. So they really have the same amount of fights. 
And uh, Liz Carmouche came in and proved tonight that she belonged there. She almost finished the fight. And one, one final question, if I could. I know that cuts have been a big discussion this week. Uh, Mr. Grice has been through a rough stretch, but that was uh, one heck of a, of a fight. Is, is it safe to say we'll see him again? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Listen, just, just to, you know, the cut thing, when I told you guys we're, we're over 100, that's, that's an absolute fact. And, and me and Joe Silver are talking about this tonight. There's going to be a night when we put on a card where there could be 15 guys we cut. And then there's going to be a night where we put on a card where we don't cut any of the losers. You know what I mean? Like, when, we, when these guys came back after that fight, you know, obviously he was really upset. I said, that's one of those fights that there's no loser. There is no loser in that fight. You, 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 when you turn on your TV set and you put down your money or you buy a ticket, that's what you expect to show up and see. As a fight fan, those are the kind of fights you want to watch. And those are the kind of fights guys won't get cut. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. I've got a question for Dennis and for Matt. First, Dennis, uh, what were you thinking in that third round when you were blasting away with uppercuts and this man would not go down? This dude, this dude is tough. Man, I was drilling away and he, <laughs> he wasn't dropping. I'm like, man, will you fall down already? And, and Matt, for you to be involved in that kind of a fight, uh, you know, like, like Dana just said, you know, it's not hurting your, your stock at all. But, you know, how do you feel coming out of it? Uh, you know, I just need to go back and watch it again. I think it was a really close fight. And, you know, I got a lot of respect for Dennis. You know, he's a tough competitor. And, uh, you know, I didn't come away with the W tonight. Uh, you know, I'm stoked to get the fight of the night. But, uh, you know, I'd give it back for a win any day. You know, my goal is to come here and win. And, you know, the fight of the night's a bonus. But, uh, you know, I, I came to win. So, but, you know, hats off to Dennis. He, he won, so. Right on. One last question for Uriah. Um, can you walk us through the, the ending of that fight? Because it, it seemed to, to happen real fast, like how everything went down. And, you know, you were just on his back and <laughs> go from there. Yeah, it was just basically, I think I attacked the neck before I had his back. Kind of like jumped on his neck and then uh, had like a body lock with the arm in and, and kind of hula myself around. I don't remember exactly. I got to take a look at it, but uh, just saw an opportunity and took it. And, and I, I knew going into that fight that Menjavar is not afraid to go to the ground or stand up or anything like that. I knew that was going to play to my advantage big time. You know, I'm, I'm a, a very dangerous fighter in a lot of different areas, but the ground game is, is one of my strongest attributes. Do you think it was funny that a lot of people were talking about how these two look a lot alike and they both had the same move tonight? <laughs> Not a little weird? I was, I was waiting for that. I, I was watching this like, oh, man, I could just see this now. Talking about the twins and their move together. It's funny. That's what I was saying back there uh, watching the fight. Uh, I was just hoping to get, Leoto, your thoughts on, uh, on being the number one contender. Dana says that this fight, you know, moves you into that slot because that's where, that's where Dan was. What, what are your thoughts on potentially fighting for the 205-pound belt again? And you would talk about a 185. Is it safe to say that you're going to shelf that and, and see what happens with this 205 shot? O que você acha agora de seu contêiner número um? Você vai querer essa oportunidade de lutar pelo cinturão ou ainda quer descer para 84? Não, agora eu vou ficar na 205, essa oportunidade que foi me dada. É, eu vou, vou ficar aqui que eu quero lutar pelo... Quero, quero essa luta pelo cinturão. Now with this opportunity, I, I want to stay at 205. I want to fight for the belt. Can you give your thoughts on a rematch with John Jones. What, what would be different and you, when you look back on the first fight? What are the mistakes that you need to, to fix in order to, to be successful in the second fight? Fala como é que seria essa revanche? O que você precisa consertar? I think it's too, too early to say. You know, I have to, to, say, to see the first, first matchup against Charles Son and John Jones. And then we will see what will happen. Dan, can you give your thoughts on the fight? Uh, you know, we, we received an email with just a quick sentence that said you, you thought you won and that you won the fight whenever he would engage with you, basically. Can you just expand on that a little bit? Well, we got a quick, we got a quick quote from the yeah, USCPR. Yeah, I haven't quoted anything yeah. yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, in my mind, I thought I did enough to win the fight, but you know, it was my fault. I don't place the blame on the judges. I should have been a little bit more aggressive. I, I let him fight his fight a little too much. Um, you know, and 
that's kind of where I, you know, I apologize for that. Normally that's not my uh, type of fight, you know, a little bit boring. Um, you know, he, he did a good job moving around and, and was real hard to hit, you know, and, and I needed to stay in his face and cut him off a little better and, and make him fight. And, you know, he did a good job not fighting. So, I mean, just picking, picking and choosing when he, when he threw some strikes. So, you know, he, he did a good job moving and, and I shouldn't have left, let, let the judges decide that fight. Where, where are you sitting now mentally? Where do you go from here? I'm sure it's a disappointing, obviously, night for you, but what, what would you like next? I mean, what do you, what's your thought process right now? Well, obviously, I'm bummed out. You know, I wasn't planning on losing. Um, you know, and, and I'm, not, I'm not by any means done. I still have goals I want to reach in this sport, and, and uh, I want to fight as soon as I can. I'm ready to go in June or July. You know, I didn't have the best the best uh, last few months, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm I feel really a lot better now, and and uh, I want to be real active this next year. That, that much time off is never good, but uh, I don't want that to happen again. I'm getting a little old. Dana, if you could answer, please. You had mentioned that Liz Carmouche was kind of brought in to be a role player here to, you know, be a the opponent for Ronda Rousey, and she had a grid showing tonight. I know you said that means that she belongs, but it, how much does that loss on her record, does it impact things? Do you have things in mind for her and how that moves Yeah, no, forward? she's in the UFC, and, and uh, she's one of the best in the world. And we'll see what happens next. Yeah. I guarantee you this. This is what I promise you. She's going to have a fucking kitchen table. <laughs> that I can promise you. And a couch. <laughs> Whatever other shit she wants. Yeah. Yeah. Car. Right. <laughs> Liz, can you take us to the last couple of seconds of the fight and describe as precisely as possible what the armbar was like? I don't know if you've ever been armbarred to really understand what you go through. Um, just imagine bending back your finger and into a point where it's not meant to go. Uh, I didn't know how much time I had left, otherwise I probably would have let it break just to go into the second round. <laughs> um, you know, I, th I thought it was good, it was, it was locked in, and then she was able to work into another position and unlock my hands. But otherwise, up until that point, I felt like I was good. Yeah, cool. Uh, question for you, Robbie Lawler. Good to see you again. Um, just curious on your thoughts on coming back to the UFC in general and then also just on your performance tonight. Josh Koscheck is never easy to beat. Just curious how you're feeling about it. Uh, it was awesome coming back. Uh, the, the whole week was amazing. Uh, it was awesome to work with the UFC. Josh is a game opponent, uh, but I feel very strong at 170. When he took me down and he, and, uh, he was on top of me, he did not feel heavy at all. And, uh, I felt like as soon as I got back to my feet, I was going to stop him. So eventually, that's what I was trying to do. But I felt great. And much has been said around, you know, behind the scenes here. We were all curious about your decision to train with AT&T. AT&T, hello. ATT. Um, what, you know, what, what led to that decision to, to change camps, and how do you feel about it? Well, I was getting a lot of good work uh, with my wrestling up at Iowa training, but I needed uh, more all-around game, the striking, the jiu-jitsu uh, at, at a high level, and I had a lot of good coaches down at ATT to work with. They pushed me. Everything was smart. Everything was precise, and uh, had a great training camp. Nice. Okay, great. Thanks. And Thanks. one last question. Uh, this one's for Court McGee. Just uh, after your loss to Nick Ring, I'm just curious if you felt, you know, extra pressure in, in light of, you know, a close decision there and people being cut and, you know, you've had a loss here, a win there, a loss. You know, I'm just curious how you felt going into this and how you feel about your performance. Initially, I did, but right before I walked out, I just said, I don't care if I win or lose. I'm just going to give it everything. And then I got the best advice I've ever been given. And I take suggestions and I take advice pretty well. And uh, the directions I was given was, punch him in the face and as much as you can, keep it simple. So that's what I did. Thanks. Uh, Dana, um, as far as, the, as the, uh, the promotion of this fight, of the main event, um, is there anything that surprised you or, or as far as um, anything, that, any point where you thought maybe it turned the corner? Um, yeah, there was a story written about how bad the gate did uh, second or third day out, and I'm kidding, Dave. Um, but uh, 
you know, I, 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 believed, I believed in this fight. I know I was the one who was talking smack about women's MMA, but I believed in this fight, and I believed in it enough to make it the main event. I, I knew that it deserved to be the main event, and uh, I don't know, man. I just, I just felt it. I, f I felt like this thing was gonna. Uh, I felt like this thing was gonna be big. I, I can tell you this. It, I mean, I'm a, I'd be a complete liar if I stood up here and told you that I thought that the media would treat this fight the way that they did. I didn't see that coming at all, but. You know, I really, really do respect the way that it was handled and, and how much attention it got. I thought it, that it deserved, especially after I did it. After I made the decision to do this and some of the comments that I heard from some ignorant people, I was really, really uh, happy and impressed with the media and the way that they handled this thing. It was awesome. And for, for Liz, is there anything as far as, like, you know, you lost the fight and everything, but uh, any kind of satisfaction or something where you can look back and go, you know, you were, you were in the first match and it was... Uh, you know, the match itself was a huge success. Yeah, of course. I, I take away from it that I gave her a run for her money, and I had her there for a second. And I'm, I'm honored just to be a part of the UFC, and I take that away. This is a, a monumental mark in history, and to, be, to participate in that is just – words can't even explain. But, of course, I'm my, my heart is critiqued, and I'm hoping for more and looking forward to coming back to reclaim myself. Dana, over here. I was curious if you're looking at the winner of Misha Tate and Kat Zingano next to face Rousey. At the winner of what? Uh, the Misha Tate and Kat Zingano fight to face Rousey next. That would make sense. And how long do you think it'll take uh, with the UFC ranking system with the women to finally be ranked in the uh, categories that the UFC currently has? Well, you know, all, it's not like all these girls came out of nowhere. You know, the, the media that covers this sport knows who these women are and, and knows what they've done. You know, I think the rankings will be out on Monday or Tuesday or whatever day we're doing them on. Oh, so they will be included in this I, portion? I think so, okay. yeah. Great. I don't know the answer to that, but if the answer was no, the answer is yes now. Hi, this question's for Liz. Um, your army of fans, the Lizbos, were out in full effect tonight. I want to know what you have to say to them. Uh, all I have to say is thank you. They really made this fight possible, pushing on, on Twitter. And thank you for making the show that you guys did. I, I really appreciate it. And one more question. Um, Just for the record, it had nothing to do with Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I know. Not it had nothing to do with Twitter. It had to do with her, Absolutely. who she is and what she's done. Do you have any, um, any advice for the girls coming in since you've paved the way tonight? Um, do you have any advice for them? Yeah, absolutely. If, if they have a dream, pursue it with all their heart. The only one that can tell them they can't do something is themselves. So as long as they set their stakes high, they can achieve anything. All right, hey Dana, wanted to get your take on the uh, on the Koscheck Lawler finish, and if you thought a lot of people on Twitter thought that it might have been a little bit uh, early, what was your take on that? What was the question? On the Koscheck Lawler finish. Koscheck was out. Okay. Yeah, Koscheck was out. It was one of those weird knockouts where he was out, and then Lawler hit him a few more times and woke him up. You could tell when Koscheck got up, Koscheck didn't even know what happened. He had no clue what happened. He watched it on the screen. Okay. And Rhonda, congratulations on the uh, on the win, and. Uh, just wanted to ask you, kind of, what, what, how did the, your octo octagon debut kind of feel with your nerves, and was it kind of what you anticipated? Um, actually, nerves weren't really that bad at all. I felt like right when I was in there, it was like I was last time I was in there was yesterday, and then the second I walked out, it seems like I was there a million years ago. It's like a weird kind of limbo place to be in, I guess. But no, I didn't feel nervous, not really. And, and where were you when, when Liz had that rear naked choke? And it sounds like, uh, you know, your mouthpiece might have fallen out and, and she has bite marks on her arm and, and kind of what happened there? Oh, yeah, she had like a, like a cross face. It was across my face and I um, actually uh, dislocated my jaw when I was a kid. And so I had like a weird injury there. And she went into the cross and was pushing her mouth guard out and her, um, her arm went past my teeth. So I'm um, sorry. It was not intentional at all, dude. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a tricky situation to be in, and especially after I saw Uriah earlier that day, and I was just like, uh-oh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I, was, I wasn't worried, but I was very aware of the severity of the situation. Thanks. Uh, question for Lyoto. Uh, I noticed you, you were preparing for Dan Henderson, a wrestler, world-class wrestler with a big overhand right hand, and you brought in Dutch kickboxer Melvin Manhoff. What was the thinking there? What, what did he bring to the camp to help you prepare for Dan? Qual foi a razão de trazer o Melvin para treinar para um cara como um wrestler como que não o Dan Henderson? Porque mesmo ele sendo wrestling, ele é um cara que ele é um trocador, ele gosta de trocar. Então o Melvin veio aqui para ajudar também nessa parte. 
de, de trocação. Even though Dan is a wrestler, he likes to strike and, and he's got good hands, so Melvin came out and helped me uh, work on my striking. Brandon, I got a question. Uh, we've heard the reaction from Dana and Liz about the, the main event and how you guys really delivered. Um, can you give us your thoughts on, you know, making history tonight and, you know, you guys really did deliver? Um, I'm just glad it was a great fight and I, um, I feel like we really did live up to all the whole hype of all of it. The, I, the place was going nuts and I'm glad it was a full house and um, I'm just honored to be a part of it. This is something really special and I think it might take a little while to really sink in. Yeah, I got a question for you, Raya Faber. You're right. Um, now that you're, you know, coming off an impressive win tonight, and you know you have Hennon with the interim belt, and we're still not really sure what's going on with Dominic back here for you. <laughs> so I, my question is, you know, you've always been on the top of the top of the class. You know, um, are you looking to get back in there with Barrow? I know you've always wanted that other rematch with Cruz. You know, what's, um, what's on your mind as far as what you want next? Uh, I'm not sure. Just whatever comes at me. I, I get uh, from all the reporters, it seems like all the drama in my life is from reporters asking, like, funny questions. And the reason I've had a lot of title shots is because I've been at the top of the weight class for 10 years now. My f third fight in the sport was a title fight before, you know, any big organization had, a, had, had the weight class. And... It's been that way for a long time. It's, I mean, it's not like uh, you know, I was ranked number third going into this fight, number three going into this fight, and I uh, performed well. So whatever these guys want to do, you know, as long as Dan is not planning on cutting me this time, <laughs> which you guys started, not him. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just ready to fight whoever. I felt great going into this fight. I keep getting better and better. I feel like, you know, I get more comfortable with my stand-up. And, and it is true that our sport is getting tougher and tougher. You've got these young kids that are growing up and eating and breathing, everything's MMA, and, and uh, I feel like I was one of those, one of the trendsetters, that I was like that as a little kid myself before there was even, you know, a, a UFC. So it's great to see the, the new generation come in, and, and I'm right there, I'm ready to do this. And I was joking about having gray hair and knee surgeries and stuff like that, because people are asking dumb questions about retiring. I'm like, retiring? I mean, pff, I feel great, man. I'm 33 years old, I feel amazing. Uh, this is the Dana. <clears throat> Dana, over yep. here. Was there uh, any rematch clause in case Liz pulled up the upset? And uh, when's the next fight in San Diego? The answer is no. And uh, th that's boxing, my friend. We, we, there's, we don't do the whole rematch clause thing. Uh, and San Diego, I don't know, but I hope soon. I love Great. it in San Thank Diego. You. Great fight. Thank Great you. Fight. Thank you. For Rhonda, please, I know that you said it might take a minute to let this all kind of sink in, but you know, I know you wanted to be here and you dreamed and believed that this could happen. So now that you're sitting up there, what do the feelings feel like versus, you know, kind of what you dreamed and what you expected? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how many adjectives I have right now. Um, it's kind of odd. <laughs> I, I'm very, very happy right now, but it's just like, it's, it's starting to all feel normal a little bit, you know, like sitting up here and all this stuff. So I think tomorrow when everything dies down and I, when I can finally sit in a room by myself and like digest is when I'm gonna run around and do a little dance. But um, right now I'm too tired to dance. <laughs> and I guess maybe to kind of follow up on that, I mean, you did give up so much of your privacy. There was so much media attention around you. What are you hoping moving forward? I mean, are you comfortable being this face of women's MMA and, and, is, and are you hoping to get a, a private life back a little bit? Uh, well, for the next week, I'm probably going to fall entirely off the grid <laughs> as much as I can. And if I see anyone, I'm not going to talk about me at all. <laughs> There's no more talking about me for a whole week in my house. And I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to have a week off to kind of be alone in private, if that's all right with everybody. <laughs> but it's, it's been cool. It's been a lot, though. That's the other thing, too. When we were talking about the media coverage for this thing, these two girls work their asses off, uh, you know. Um, selling this fight. They did a great job. I mean, everything that they had to do, they were up at 5 in the morning going to do the media obligations. And it's refreshing having people that go in and do the shit they're supposed to do. I like it. <clears throat> uh, this is a question for Uriah. Uriah, 
you were coming off of a, a hard loss against Henry Burrow, and you brought in a new a, kind of a switch up in your coaching staff. What have you been working on to develop your game further? So in those rematches against the top dogs at the division, what are you going to do differently with that new strategy? You know, it just depends. You got to talk to your coaches and, and reassess things. And we have Dwayne Ludwig who came in, and, and those who know Dwayne, he's one of the hardest working guys in our sport, which matches great with Team Alpha Male and. Uh, just adding to the coaching staff that we already have and all the, the people that have come in to help. But I, I'll figure it out. You know, I, I know I'm not – I'm just mini, like barely away from having that belt. I lost to Burrell, who's an incredible fighter. Uh, I broke my rib. I mean, he caught me with an amazing knee in the first round and broke my rib. And uh, didn't get to get crazy in there a little bit. I like to get a little wild in there and, and uh, wasn't able to open up like I wanted to. So – Maybe do that a little bit earlier. And then against Cruz, just uh, I'm a, I feel like I want to do whatever I want when I get in there with him, you know? I mean, Dominic's very, very tricky as well, but I actually had an easier time doing damage to him than I did with Brow. I don't know if it was the rib or what, but uh, I'm ready for, for whatever. I just have to make some small adjustments and, and continue to, to move forward. And a question for Liz, too. We heard what uh, Rhonda was going to do when she goes back home, and obviously both of you have ran the gauntlet as far as your media uh, you know, obligations go. What's the first thing you're going to buy? Food. Uh, <laughs> Locked on. My birthday was on Tuesday, so uh, we went to Morton's Steakhouse, and I got to watch everybody else eat, and they brought out cheesecake, which I'm completely okay with. Like, I love seeing people eat, so it's fine. But uh, it's probably going to be a creme brulee cheesecake, and then from there, who knows? <laughs> We'll, we'll take two more questions. Yeah, Liz, congratulations on a, on a courageous effort there. Came up a little short, but fantastic effort. At one point there in the middle of the first round, it seemed like you had your hands clasped behind your head on the ground, almost like you were maybe trying to lure Ronda in. I'm not sure exactly. Was there a strategy there? Uh, no, it's always common practice uh, for us when we get to the ground. You don't want to keep your head undefended because if she throws a kick and it lands or throws a punch, then your head has nowhere to go except the mat and then you can get knocked unconscious for something that you do ultimately can protect yourself from. One more question. Who's got the last one? A uh, question yeah. for Rhonda. Rhonda, the other day when Dana put the belt on your shoulder, you frowned at him and you didn't seem too happy. Was it a little better scenario to grab the belt tonight when he gave it to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, when he first told me that we were going to do this, I, I told him that I wouldn't feel like the the actual UFC champ until he personally, like, until I won a, a fight in the octagon and he personally put the belt on my waist. And uh, so, yeah, I, I really feel like I can comfortably live with calling myself that title now, but I was a little bit uncomfortable before and I wouldn't hold the strike force belt before, uh, even after I'd won it. It's just kind of a, I feel, un, I want to feel like I'm on the same ground with my opponent when we, when we come in and not like I'm coming in at an advantage because I'm not. And then the last question I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, there was a lot of critics out there, even people saying, who wants to watch somebody armbar another person in, in a minute? Do you think that, you know, the performance you gave tonight, you know, you fought off a very, you know, uh, good opponent, you almost uh, had a submission, and then you, you did other things. Do you think that that kind of vindicated in any way yourself and, and the, um, made the critics have to say, you know, hey, you're wrong? Well, from the sound I, like of what the, the crowd was like tonight, I, it seems like everybody was really happy and they liked the show, and the critics are going to criticize regardless. That's why we call them critics. So all the people that had a good time tonight, I'm happy you were entertained. So I really want to say one more time, I really want to thank all the media for all the support for this fight. It was incredible. It was awesome. Thank you very much. Have a great night. <clears throat>